Cooking Without Looking is underwritten by Magnifying America, featuring Max TV glasses. Distant spectacles for watching television, designed especially for the legally blind and visually impaired. Magnifying America, distributors of Max TV glasses and other empowering machines for blind or low vision people. 1 800 364 1608. American Express is a proud underwriter of Cooking Without Looking. American Express has been a leader in supporting organizations that raise awareness and assist people with disabilities. SATH, the Society for Accessible Travel and Hospitality, is an educational nonprofit membership organization whose mission is to raise awareness of the needs of all travelers with disabilities. 800-513-1126 or by logging on to sath.org. This is Cooking Without Looking, the first television show produced especially for people who are blind and visually impaired. Welcome to Cooking Without Looking, the first television show especially designed for people who are totally blind or severely visually impaired. I'm Alan Preston. And I'm Celia Chacon, and today we're going to take you through a couple of top flight recipes, as well as, on, as well as some tips on how to take a flight. Hi, I'm Annette Watkins. That's right, Celia. Today's show will explain how to travel without trouble if you're disabled. There are over 60 million Americans with disabilities. Some have hearing impairments, some have visual impairments, and some have mobility impairments. And today on segment three, Food for Thought, I'll be speaking to a representative from SAF, the Society for Accessible Travel and Hospitality, as well as two professionals who own a travel agency and will teach us how to travel without trouble if you're disabled. So, Alan and Annette, let's take off now on another episode of Cooking Without Looking. Today on Cooking Without Looking, we welcome Julie Manchester from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, Julie, I understand that you're a cooking ware and cooking utensil distributor. Tell us a little bit about your visual impairment. Well, I have retinitis pigmentosa, mm -hmm. and uh, commonly known as RP, a lot of people call it RP. And it's a uh, degenerative eye disease that takes your peripheral vision, your night vision, and so the, uh, the way I see is, um, like looking through binoculars. Tunnel vision. Certainly. Tunnel vision, yeah. People, some people call it tunnel vision. Sometimes, depending on uh, how severe the, the disability um, visually, some people say it's look, like looking through a straw. For me, it's like looking through binoculars, so I'm lucky. I can't wait to get going on this pizza recipe of yours. I've started the base for our pizza dough, which is some yeast, some honey, and some oil. And if you can see in the bowl here, the yeast has started to grow. It's bubbling, right? It's bubbling, and yeah. I, is it's that, that's growing. what I can smell, it, right? That's what you're smelling. Okay, the so yeast now, smell is a very rich smell. How, how, much, how much yeast and how much water did you mix together in there? One cup of water, a teaspoon of honey, and the sugar also helps the yeast grow a little faster. And how much sugar did we put in? Did that you was, put in? That was about a teaspoon. Okay. Yeah, teaspoon. And now this has been sitting here and working for a little while, hasn't it's it? It's been about five minutes. That's all it takes. And if it doesn't grow after about five minutes, then your yeast is no good and you need to throw it away and, and buy some fresh yeast. If you can't see it very well, how could you tell what, that your yeast was growing? Well, for me, with my visual impairment, um, I can see that the yeast has this film, the water has this film on top. Um, if not, um, you can hear the bubbles just slightly. You can. So there is an audible quality to the yeast. You can hear it. Okay, and so if you can hear the little bubbles popping, sort of like soda pop would. Just uh, a little softer than that. Not quite okay. as obvious, but okay. yeah, you can, you could be sightless and actually know that your yeast has grown. All right, what's up next? So what we're going to do is I'm going to add um, one and a half of the three cups of flour to the mixture. How do you know how to measure the cups? I have a half cup measurement here. And because I'm doing uh, half cup in increments, not you know one whole cup increments, so I'm using the half cup measure. And so I dip into the flour 
And uh, when you measure with flour, you want to have a level bit of flour. And I use mm -hmm. my fingers because I'm very tactile. I like using my fingers. And that's what we put in with the with the one cup of water and the and the yeast mix. And now I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt. Okay, we're going to mix this all together. Wait, right. You're going to mix this. I'm going to mix this. And now, if you notice, I don't have a stand mixer. I don't have. A, uh, a machine, I'm using my hands. You're doing it all strictly by hand. And this is the fun part, Alan. All right, so now we've got this incorporated. I can tell. You can tell by the feel of it. By the feel of it okay. that it's incorporated enough. What, what is it you're looking for in that kind of a feel? I just is want to make sure I don't have any water on the edge, any excess flour on the edge, that everything that I've poured into the bowl is now incorporated. And right now what I'm doing is I'm kneading the dough. And what happens is it forms a nice tight ball. And what we do with this is we put it in a clean bowl. We oil the bowl and we put the dough into the bowl and we get the oil all over the dough. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press the dough out to almost the edge. And I just use my fingers and I'm feeling what I'm doing here. And again, if you have no sight, you can do this. Now we're going to get to some interesting things here, the toppings. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Now, you did some prep work with this. I did earlier. You? I have mayonnaise, garlic, the lemon zest, artichokes, cremini mushrooms, and Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, and mix well. Okay. Now I'm going to put this mixture on the stone, which Was there a reason that you let the crust set for a while, or does it hurt it to set for any length of time? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, if you had let the crust sit, instead of having this mixture ready right away after putting the dough on the pizza stone, right. it would be, uh, as it is now, a little, a little puffier, a little thicker. Thicker crust. Right. Okay. If you put this mixture on directly after you roll out the dough, it'll be a little thinner thin crust. crust. Thinner, thinner, crispier. Neapolitan, I think they call it. I like thin, crispy crust. I do, too. Of course, I like pizza in general. Well, that's a good thing, because we're having pizza today. So we're going to take this mixture, and I have my handy-dandy scraper, which gets every last bit of the goodies. And I'm going to spread this all over the dough. So I'm going to use my fingers as well, because I need to feel the edge of the pizza to make sure I don't press the mixture off the pizza dough. I don't want it on the table. I want it all on my pizza dough. So the last part of this is I take this tomato and I'll put it out onto the pizza. Oh, sort of like you'd put pepperoni pieces yeah. out there. It looks lovely. And then I would put my Italian seasoning on that, a little bit of extra cheese on top to make it look gorgeous. And then it goes in the oven It for goes how long? into the oven, 425 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes. And when it comes out of the oven, this is what it looks like Oh, when it's done. does that ever look good? Doesn't that look lovely? Oh, and it smells great too. Julie, thank you so much for coming to our show today. Thank you for having me, Alan. It was a pleasure to be here. Julie's Parmesan Artichoke Pizza. Dough ingredients, one package yeast, one tablespoon honey, one cup warm water, two tablespoons extra virgin olive oil, one teaspoon salt, three cups unbleached all-purpose flour. Dough directions. In a large bowl, combine the water, yeast, honey, and one tablespoon of the olive oil. Turn the dough out onto a lightly floured surface and knead until the dough is smooth but still slightly tacky. Punch dough down and turn out onto a lightly floured surface and roll into a 15-inch circle. Topping ingredients. One can artichoke hearts in water, well drained and chopped. One cup mushrooms, chopped. One third cup mayonnaise. One tablespoon lemon zest, finely chopped. One clove garlic, pressed or finely chopped. One half cup Parmesan cheese, grated two large plum tomatoes, thinly sliced, and one tablespoon Italian seasoning. Topping directions. Spread mixture over pizza dough, leaving a three-quarter inch border. Place tomato slices evenly over the mixture. Bake for 20 to 25 minutes until crust is golden brown. <laughs>